Dude, like if they ever come out with like CrossFit Games rings, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed. <laughs> Marquez here alongside Matt Fraser, the four-time fittest man on earth. We're in Barcelona, Spain here for the Freakies Challenge. Uh, Matt, how's the trip going so far? So far, so good. You know, we've been over here a while now, so, you know, finally adjusted the time zones and uh, having some fun. Right on. Uh, so, earlier uh, last week, you were in strength and depth competing mm -hmm. first time stepping on the competition floor for the season. Uh, how did that go as far as execution and individual event performances? I mean, execution went uh, very well. You know, I was very happy with a lot of my performances um you know even like i think some of the wins there were things i could fix and then i think the run was one of my lower place finishes and i, I couldn't be happier with the results you know i smashed the time and the pace i was looking for so um i was very happy with that and uh we got, you got to try on water rowing what was that yeah. experience like uh i mean there's not a lot nowadays that you haven't seen you can oh, see something man. new in your first competition um that one, when they first in, when I first heard that there was on water rowing, uh, I was I wasn't the happiest to hear it because I've tried uh, getting in like a proper skull and uh, and it wasn't a trainer, and so you know the boat is what, narrower than your hips. You're sitting on top of the boat. It was you, you can barely stay afloat. Um, and then I watched the video and they they listed all the precautions that they're taking. We're using a training boat. There's going to be someone in the boat. We're raising the riggers. We're moving the oars out. We're weight correcting for the person helping you. Um, so it really very simplified it down. So it made it safe and, and enjoyable for most people's first time out. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, very enjoyable. I now understand why people do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I look forward to, you know, getting into it a little yeah, bit. Nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they kind of even the playing field out as far as like letting capacity kind of shine. Yeah, you know, they, they, they did a great job of going through and thinking of, you know, things that for a first time rower aren't gonna make a difference, you know. Something as simple as like the proper way to row is the handles overlap. So you have one hand in front of the other, so you have more leverage on your paddles. Mm -hmm. But what they did for us is they just moved the oars out so that we couldn't, uh, smack the handles together and just get tied up and yeah. you know it's a short race trying to make it as simple as possible for us so we can focus on the race and not just stuff that doesn't translate 100 percent from the erg yeah right on well um obviously had an impressive performance walked away with the overall win now you're in barcelona uh, kind of back to back on the trip here uh, we're here for the Freakish Challenge. Uh, you were here last year last couple of years yeah what about this event uh keeps you coming back so you guys, you guys will be there tonight. Yeah. Uh, you guys will see very quickly. The crowd is like none other. I remember the first time I came here, the competition was a lot smaller and it was held in a nightclub. Oh, wow. And it was like, it was like one, two in the morning for the final event on the dance floor. They had like the lights, the music, everything going like a dance club. I've never seen a crowd so energetic. And then, each year that we come back, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Remember last year when we came out, they like shut off the lights and they had a drum line all done up in neon lights. It was wild. That's awesome. Um, and so uh, not only you know are you here to, to be a part of the event, but you get to coach, kind of be the mentor yeah. of the team. Um, I know we've kind of talked about this <laughs> off camera, but what can uh, Matt Fraser's team expect from you? I mean, it's... it's uh... It's going to be tough, you know, like being being a coach for a team when you first meet them, you know, you don't know what their strengths, weaknesses are. So it's going to be uh, trying to get an honest answer out of them of, all right, what is everyone's strengths here? What is everyone's weaknesses? Um, you know, but I think I think in a role like this, it's more just like the support and encouragement, you know, try to give them a good hype up speech and like, you know, just like high school football, getting ready getting them ready in the locker and ready to run through a wall. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Um, and so like this trip is kind of like the other half of uh, kind of being a, a professional athlete. You know, obviously you have your competition and yeah. you go around and do all the other uh, stuff as well. But what in particular outside of competing is your favorite part of being, you know, one, a pro athlete kind of, 
yeah, doing this kind of lifestyle? I mean, this is, uh, I mean, we're, we're getting to tour the world and, and we, we have a tour guide everywhere we go. And, you know, I'm, I'm here with my friends and family. Mm -hmm. uh, they travel with me. It's uh, looking back on this once the career is done, you know, these will be the stories that get told of, yeah. you know, I went, went to Barcelona, went to Madrid. I was in London, like all these cool stops that we get to do as, as a group. And, and now kind of looking forward to the rest of the season. You're heading towards the fifth title. Just real big picture, like what is it like to be an athlete kind of on the verge of history? Um, I'm, I'm sure it's different for, for everyone. Um, I'm sure if, yeah, if you ask anyone that question, for me, it's, it's the same as going for the first title. Mm -hmm. I genuinely don't give a shit on like, oh, well, so-and-so did this before and now you're doing it. It's like, what do I give a fuck what someone else did? Yeah. Like yeah. it's uh carve your own path. I mean, it's, well, it's not, it's not even that. Like, like I've, I've said this even before I won my first gold medal was like, well, if someone else had only won two, like should Tia, Tia Chumi quit because she yeah. got three? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, she's still doing her thing. She's still on her path to her career. Yeah. Like if someone else had won 10 titles, are my three or four irrelevant? Yeah. Well, no, I'm very proud of each and every one of those. True. So, I mean, I mean, for, for me, it's like if the games go on forever, every year, the probability that someone's going to beat my record is just like flipping a coin. It's only a matter of time. There's only two options. Either they're going to beat my record or not beat my record. Yeah. It's only a matter of time before it aligns and someone does. So I'm just making sure I'm proud of the results that I have and like I'm completing the reasons of why I, why I'm here, why I got into the sport, you know. And so uh, while you were in straight and depth, you turned 30. Uh, yeah, which I did. Mean, which means as far as like your adult life, you spent more than half your adult life competing in the sport. Uh, when you think about that, <laughs> not to put, put, it, put any weight on you, but uh, I mean, what, what have you learned about yourself like through this kind of oh, journey? Oh man, I have, uh, I have learned a few things. Uh, the The fact that I have, I started CrossFit, like, or I first went into a CrossFit gym, like late, late 2012. So I'm spanning eight years now. That's mind blowing to me. Cause I always, I, I'm still, I still always think of myself as like the new kid on the block of yeah. like, oh, I just got here. But like looking back at it now, there's only a handful of guys who have competed the games more times than me. Yeah. There's no one that's podiumed more than me. Mm -hmm. it, that's mind blowing. I remember the first time meeting Scott Panchak. Be like, Joe, you, you've been at the games like a million times, right? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, this is my third year. And I remember being like, oh my God. I remember telling O'Keefe, if, if I end up going to the games five times, just take me out back and shoot me. <laughs> like. That was good thing you didn't do that. <laughs> well, well, because at the time I was like, no, my main priority is engineering. Like mm -hmm. CrossFit will not. So I, I figured I would do a couple years, one or two years at the games, and then by then like have a good engineering job and go full steam ahead with that. And little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> Got it hooks in the end. Yeah. Man. Um, no. So the, I'd say the number one thing I've learned um, in my time in CrossFit is uh, confidence. Mm -hmm. And not like, like cockiness, uh, more just confident in who I am. Like mm -hmm. learning that if someone likes me, that's great. If someone doesn't like me, that's fine too. Like they're yeah. allowed just the same way that I may not like someone or something. Yeah. There doesn't have to be a rhyme or reason. Yeah. It's just, and, that, and that's okay. Like yeah. you don't like what I'm doing. That's okay. Cool. Yeah. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to be hurtful, you know? Yeah. I like who I am. I like the people around me. The people around me like me, so it's good. Well, right on, man. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Obviously, we like seeing you compete <laughs> and hanging out. Um, see you tonight, and uh, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for chatting. Thank you.